Good morning everybody and welcome to our virtual open morning here at the National Horse Racing College. Um, so this morning we're just going to have a chat all about the 12 week residential foundation course and we'll also um, touch on a few of other courses as well that have been requested so the 14 to 16 program as well um, but it will mainly be about the foundation course and we're just currently waiting for the learners to finish their breakfast break at the minute and then they'll be down to um, to see to the horses get ready to ride etc so we'll be able to see that um, in the next 10 minutes so in the meantime um, we'll have a have a look about around the bottom yards here and I'll tell you a little bit about the um, 12 week residential foundation course so there's plenty of horses here that we can meet a few of them have been ridden this morning for first lot um, and a few of them are, are yet to be ridden. So this is Ralph. Um, Ralph's quite a firm favourite here at the at the NHC. There's a lot of lot of favourites around that the that the learners pick as they go along the course, um, but he's definitely a firm favourite within them. Um, so just a little bit about the foundation course. So it's available for anybody age 16 or over. So we don't have a maximum age limit. Um, whether you're looking to start a new career path um, or it's your, you know, your first career after finishing school, we are open for anybody at all. As long as you're you know, fit and able to work with horses on the ground or ridden, that's all we ask for. There's no academic qualifications required either or previous equine experience so whether you've ridden a horse um, since you've been a toddler or whether you've never touched a horse before in your life uh, we welcome all um, to do the, the foundation course so the foundation course is a 12-week course it's residential so you do live on site for the duration of the course and um, you do have to live on site as well so some people request if um, if they live local if they can travel home every day but that's um, that's not something that we're able to offer it is a residential course so once the 12 weeks is completed um, successfully completed learners will be offered work placement with a racehorse trainer so this work placement is for six weeks long um, the location of the workplace is determined by both the learner and our training manager so we make sure that the work placement is suitable for you um, a suitable working environment so whether that's you know a busy yard or or a um, or a quieter yard flat or national hunt yard um, it's completely you know half of it's your choice and the training manager will make sure that you know it's suitable for you so that's what happens after successful completion of the 12-week course um, and once the six-week work placement is successfully um, completed the um, the trainer will typically take the individual on as a full-time employee um, which is what most of our learners go on to do so 96% of our learners actually um, once they've successfully completed the foundation course will go on into full-time employment after um, 18 weeks of start in the foundation course. So the learners are just heading in now, getting ready to ride. Mm -hmm. They've all had their ride list, so they know exactly who they're riding today. Who are you riding today, Doug? Oh. <laughs> Have you ridden much? Yeah, ridden Doug much? All this week. Dog. Oh, have you? How are you getting on with them? <laughs> oh well that's good yeah. well good and bad <laughs> yeah that's the main thing isn't it yeah. fantastic are you on the gallops today or on the in, in, in the arena fab right well, we'll be heading there as well to to watch <laughs> cheeky monkey isn't it? so there'll be a few more learners popping in um in the next five ten minutes just to get their horses ready to ride. Uh, so I mentioned earlier, um, they're riding, this is their second lot. So we call the second ride um, a lot. So that's what you'll find in the racing industry, what that means. Yeah. 
So we're joined now by two of the barn managers. Um, so are you non-riders on the course? Yeah. yeah. So you've been chosen then as barn managers. Yeah. So how did you feel when you were chosen as barn managers? Uh, I was actually quite excited for it because I wanted to know like what sort of roles you'd have and like what type of jobs it would be done. Yeah. It's, it's not hard, but it's quite good to try and get your team to keep on the ball kind of. And just keep yeah, going. definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Keep trying to push them more so they can get like yeah exactly and it's a good opportunity for you too isn't it as well especially when you go off working into the in the racing industry yeah. to know that you've done this role here um and a lot of them are like a lot of people in our group are really are doing progressing well and they're all getting to the potential that they can do it yeah and a lot of them have shown that they're ready for the racing thing. yeah that's fantastic well done so um did you want to give us a little bit of a tour around then so we can meet some of your favorite horses have a look at the tack room should we head over there? Yeah, let's go. So a lot of people like Fuzzy, don't they? He's one, it's definitely a firm favorite. So the bar manager is just gonna give us a little bit of a tour um, around the yards and just meet a few of the horses, explain why, why they like them. Yep. So do one of you look after this barn? That's your barn, okay. Fab, so. So this is Fuzzy, your favourite then? Pulling a few faces. <laughs> so, he's, got quite, he's, got quite a nice, he's not very nice actually, he's got quite a cheeky attitude. So, yeah. He kind of tests you a bit and he has gave me a lot of confidence for his, like, his little attitude. So, yeah. Kind of, kind of, like, with his little attitude, he's kind of helped me put, like, get more confidence with the leg plan because they're quite yeah. picky horses. Yeah. So, just like I'd say when you come here, just yeah exactly and you get to know the personalities as you go along as well don't you yeah well, the thing is when you go out into the workplace you know you get a lot of different personalities and a lot that are quirky so you've got to be used to that haven't you fantastic so any others that, what's your favorite? <laughs> Good old Frank. He's been shy today. Does he? Yeah. He's one of my favourites. Oh, well, he, he really has been a bit antisocial, hasn't he? Yeah. But he's in there somewhere. <laughs> Bless him. So, can you take us around a few of the others then? And yeah. ones that are. Uh... Boris. Yeah. He was a field cat horse. Yeah. Yeah. He turned out a lot. Yeah. But he's a nice lad in a stable, is he? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Kimmy's falling asleep. He's a bit grumpy. He tends to as well. He's quite good at like getting the confidence as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like he'll be nice and he'll just kind of like sit and just like how grumpy he is. <laughs> so he's one of our greys, isn't he? Yeah. He's a, he's a level three, so like the riders that come here, they're going to be stronger and they're going to like, obviously the instructors will see that they think that he can go on him. And he's, he's one of the first level threes you go on. Yeah. So you're like, you'll know you're doing well because you'll, you'll, you'll see on the ride list because they put a ride list out every single morning you'll see you'll see that you're on time and quite, you're also on one of the level 3 horses you first go in the gallops. Yeah. 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 It's quite good, but it's the same as Frank as well. Frank's a level 3. He's a school. Yeah. He's like one of the first ones to go Yeah, exactly. So as you're saying there about graded, all our horses are graded in the stable and um, when ridden. So, um, so if there's any learners watching that are starting soon, um, you will start on the lower graded horses and then work your way up to the, the horses that are graded slightly higher. Uh, is he? 
Ah, bless him. Um, right then. So we'll have a look at one more and then we'll have a little chat about um, a kind of a typical routine that you, that you have. So who else have we got? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, right then, should we touch a little bit on um, the routine then? So, from the moment you wake up, the time you wake up, to when you finally relax at night. So, what do you do then throughout the day? I get up at half five, to then go for then like that, which is at six. And then we'll, at half six, we'll all go to the tap room and get the register done. So, we'll be down here for about 35 minutes past six and we start feeding the horses. Um, and then usually like five people get picked because there's usually five horses out at night. Yeah. And you'll go and get those two horses in. And you'll get another five people that will also help you pick the field horses feet out because you get some tricky ones. And you real barriers in your thoughts and that and get Yeah. Uh, so then it comes to eight o'clock when you're on it, so you just go down. You usually be finished your two boxes about quarter two. Yeah. Quarter to eight and you'll be ready to go out for 8 o'clock to be filled out. Um, so you're usually filled out at 8 and then the school lot leaves at 8. Yeah. And um, school lot leaves at 8. We will let the non-riders and the juniors that are all playing. We usually not get time on the simulator yeah. just before we're going yeah. to lunch. Yeah. Them, for them ones that are riding, we get a bit of time. Yeah, it's a good fitness as well then, aren't they? Yeah. You know, like when you, if you do get a chance to ride, when you go out to the racing industry, yeah. that you're like you know how to do it. Yeah. Some trainers will obviously offer you to go uh, out and ride. Yeah. Like you see how you like that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so we'll go back to routine in a second, but how, how do you find them being a non-rider? Because obviously most people that are here want to ride. Yeah. Um, so how do you find being a non-rider? It's quite interesting because at the minute we've got a non-rider program on uh, yeah. and you do different stuff because obviously most of our seniors are out riding on the gallops and then the juniors are riding on the school. Yeah. So we're not getting that opportunity yeah, yeah. to ride and things like that. So we yeah. do like bandages and like we flat up, we pull mains and we feed, we feed the classes and we lunch. You get to learn yeah. well. a few things that we're putting on at the minute for us. There's yeah. like Lee, uh, one of the yard supervisors, uh, he kind of He's showing us like how to because Frank's also got a sore face at the minute. He's showing us how to yeah. treat it. Yeah, exactly. It. So you get like taught how to do that, and he like teaches you like to try and boost your confidence out taking horses out. Mm. Like your horses to take out that have not been out in a while and they're a bit fresh. So he shows you like just keep be firm with them and just yeah. show them kind of like who's in charge. You know, kind of can't let them like take the mess out of you. So you yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of opportunities as a non-rider because obviously people, you know, think well if you can't ride then. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, a lot of opportunities. Yeah, and it prepares you as well for when you go into the workplace. If you're going to be, um, you know, going to the races with the horses, you're learning about um, not only the veterinary care, um, it's the best turned out, it's making sure horses are turned out to high standard, um, all them different things, isn't it? How to trot horses up, how to check if they're lame, how to uh, check the temperature as well. So yeah. Like, and it's just like a lot of the riders don't really know, wouldn't really know how to check the temperature. Like, yeah. cause they're like, also they're riding and they're, they're not getting to find out how that is. Like, like so if non riders go out and ask, oh, can you check the temperature? You know how to do it. So yeah, like, exactly. So you feel confident going out into the workplace yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in the afternoons, then, what, what would you typically do in the afternoon? Um, Be a lecture first and then go to even stables or even stables first. But yeah. at even stables, what usually happens is you all all of the seniors come will come down and some of the juniors are usually in a lecture, it's usually yeah. uh, and we'll all work round the left hand bar and like go around the horses because some of them do need two people to hold because they're a bit more tricky. Yeah. So we kind of that's what we do. We take them we'll take it round in turns and we'll go around. Two people are usually that are doing two people to do three horses. Like Jack and Damien. Yeah, so like, yeah. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Turnip hoshes get done first so that they're ready so they can eat their dinner and yeah. turn the system. So that's usually what gets done because you'll use these novel John or Doug Willard and Doug that'll get done first and go and chat with them in their farm. They'll usually get done first so that they're ready to go out. Yeah, so you know that routine then. So that you know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. So in your lectures then, afternoon, what, what do you typically do in them? Uh, it's usually steps to success we can do. But it's uh, also for seniors, it's ear assessing work. Yeah, like, you'd do that. There's stuff like what you've done, like tackling, like testing up a horse, putting books on and stuff, explaining all of it, but the theory side of it, not actually yeah. the practical side. Yeah. And then what happens with them is the texture, obviously in your week 10, in your week you start you should start your assessments when you're going to the senior, so you're on week six. Yeah. And your first assessment that you do is your mucking out one. Yeah. Uh, and then it's you've got to do a shaving bed and a straw bed yeah, and, and under twenty, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. So you have to work fast quite, then. Yeah. Like you will get used to it. Like when I first came here it was taking me up to like thirty minutes to do a box. Yeah. Yeah, which is understandable because yeah. you know you get faster as you go along, yeah. but also doing it correctly as well, isn't it's, it? It's not. It's not that hard. It's quite easy to muck out but once you get the gist of what you're doing. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a couple of weeks into the routine, you know, you soon get to know yeah. how everything works. Yeah. My first time here doing a box, it usually took me an hour. Right. But people will obviously be ahead of me because I'm taking so long, but I've worked up to a good 20 minutes now doing a box. Yeah, which is fantastic. And it just like teaches you just to be a bit faster and a bit on the ball, and you've just got to keep moving about. All yeah, time. exactly. So you've got to be fit then as well. <laughs> and it's like, obviously, look, before I came here, I'd worked in racing, I worked for Lucinda Russell. Okay. And I worked at writing school as well, and I, I don't know how old I was when I started there, but I've got two hours from home as well, so yeah. it's, I kind of knew what I was doing, but at the same time I was learning whilst I was doing it. Yeah, exactly. It's learning more as you go along, and it's yeah. like, the, you have to, the evening stables as well, when you're doing it, you usually have to do a full drum, so a full drum usually lasts about 20 to 40 minutes, like, yeah. it depends how much work you can run them, because like some of the horses that come in, they're like drenched in sweat, so. Yeah, exactly. So you've both got, you know, a variation of experience prior. So you weren't, you know, no experience at all and you've had horses. Yeah. Um, so how did you find coming into racing then instead of um, what would be the generic way of riding? Well, when I first went into it, I went into it last year, it was quite different from like what I've experienced in the past because the horses were more flighty yeah. at the race yard. They were all quite on the ball because they're still in the race and they're still really fit animals because they know what they're doing. Yeah. And you just like, when I worked there, I, was, I worked there for quite a while, I was getting on the ball. When I first started working there, it was taking quite a while to knock horses out, but then over the period of time, it got faster and faster. Yeah. But, uh, when I first went in, it was quite a jump. It was basically just throwing my tail in the deep end to try and see what it was like. But I did find that after a bit, it did get quite easier yeah so definitely kind of trust the process when you first go into it yeah so yeah yeah exactly perfect well thank you very much for your time this morning really okay. appreciate that thanks for chatting to us yeah. and uh, i'm sure we'll see you about until 12 o'clock today doing all your work <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Yeah. so just chatting to barn managers there um now we'll be able to watch some of the learners tacking up you all right you're getting ready to ride are you in the indoor or the on the gallops today? On the gallops, today. On the gallops we'll be seeing you out there. Yeah. It's a nice sunny day for it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely right, see you in a bit. So there's a few questions coming in from um, everybody. Obviously, whilst we were chatting to them guys, we didn't want to answer any live, um, but now we'll be able to answer some live. Um, 
So there's a few questions about application process. So although the course is only available for those aged 16 and over, you can apply um, at the age of 15 um, whilst you're still in school. We do advise getting your applications in as soon as possible because our courses do fill particularly fast. Um, so yeah, absolutely apply um, as soon as possible. Uh, the question from Grace uh, about the uniform, um, is it given to you or do you have to purchase it? So within the cost of the course, um, you'll actually receive a, a waterproof jacket, polo shirt and a jumper. Um, so that's within the cost of the course. Um, so the actual cost of the course is £350 um, for the duration of the 12 weeks. So that £350 actually includes your accommodation, um, your meals every day um, and the training is um, is free anyway so that's all you'd have to pay 350 pounds uh, plus a 50 pound refundable room deposit and um, we do have bursaries available as well so anybody with a household income of 23,000 or less um, are eligible for a bursary um, so if that's something that you'd want to request then you just drop us an email um, or chat to us at your interview um, at interview stage and we'll be able to send you some forms across for that. So in terms of other gear that you need for riding, um, such as your boots, your hat, uh, your breeches, your riding gloves, that's all something that you would need to purchase before you start your course. So we do have an on-site and online shop um, and we can advise you on the right equipment that you need. Um, we do have a full list of equipment that, that each learner will need to, to take part in the course um, and that can be sent easily via email. So if anybody wants to request um, a list, then please drop us an email or send us a message on Facebook and we'll be able to ping one over to you, no problem at all. So you can see a lot of the riders are now getting on board, um, ready to head either into the indoor school or onto the gallops. Uh, the pony in front of us now, that's actually Charlie, our little racing pony here. Um, we've got two racing ponies here, Charlie and Rosie. Um, so anyone that's been here before will know how much of a little ledge Charlie is. So it was a question about the qualifications you receive after the course as well. Um, so you'll receive a qualification, the, it's the level one diploma in work-based resource care. Um, so that's what the foundation course is. You'll also achieve functional skills in your maths and English. Um, so if you haven't achieved a level four or above in English and maths GCSE before your course start date, um, that's not a problem at all. You can actually do your functional skills here at the college um, during your course. So don't worry if you don't have them. Um, if you haven't got the level four or above, English and Maths GCSE, we can help you achieve them whilst you're here. So everybody will have achieved the um, functional skills in English and Maths. You'll also achieve the emergency first aid certificate whilst you're here as well. 
Um, and there's a few others, so you've got the Level 3 Award in Principles of Transporting Horses by Road on Short Journeys, and um, that's another good qualification for those that are heading out into the workplace. Um, and a racing yard that will be going to the races, etc. Um, you'll also gain life skills as well, so life sk skills in um, cooking, nutrition, fitness, looking after your money, um, and we have a lot of talks from speakers, um, including Racing Welfare and NARS. So a little bit about Racing Welfare and NARS. Um, racing Welfare is a charity that supports anybody working in racing, uh, whether that be um, you know if they need physical support, if they need mental support, um, you know if they need help looking after the money anything at all where they need support racing welfare is a charity that's there for anybody working in racing and nars is the national association of racing staff um so they um they are the company behind the um the wages accreditation of the wages etc um so that's a website you can head to as well to to have a look at what the wages are like in racing and just touching on that as well, the horse racing industry is the only equine discipline that actually has regulated pay as well. So if anybody watching is um, is wanting to work with horses in, say, dressage or show jumping yard, eventing yard, the pay isn't actually regulated, whereas in the horse racing industry, um, it is regulated. There's a question from Catherine, is there two different courses, do I have to pay for both of them? So the main course is our 12 week residential foundation course. So that's just the one course that's 12 weeks long um, and that's £350 for that course. Um, so if you want to achieve a qualification in um, work-based racehorse care then that would be the qualification that you'd need. So they're all just getting in order now, ready to head out to either the indoor arena or the gallops. Uh, so a question from Grace, do you have to wear long boots or can it be ankle boots and chaps? Um, either, it's completely up to you what you choose to wear. Um, as you can see in front of me now, um, he's got long boots on um, and then there's a few with, with boots and chaps as well. So it's completely up to you, um, whatever you feel comfortable in when, whilst you're riding. All we would advise is that if they're long boots um, for the more generic way of riding, just make sure they don't pinch you behind the knee. Because in racing, obviously you ride a little bit shorter uh, when you're cantering and they can pinch behind the knee. So there is a, um, a certain type of boot that you can purchase that's actually uh, more comfortable to wear. So you can see uh, these are um, racing boots here. Um, so they're slightly lower so they won't pinch behind the knee, so if anyone's wondering um, what they look like. But it's completely up to the individual what, what boots you want to wear. So a question from Isabel um, about the money you've paid. If you can just drop us an email via info at the nhc.co.uk, we can have a look into that for you um, and we'll, we'll be able to email you back.
so another question um, from Isabel. Um, so this is also regarding the bursary. So anybody that's granted a bursary uh, to pay for the majority of the course, um, a lot are also offered a, a grant towards their equipment for riding. Um, so this money goes towards um, your hat, your purchase of your hat, your boots, um, your, your gloves, your britches, the equipment that you need for the course. Um, so that's actually, they're the items that are purchased in our online and on-site shop. So the, court, the day that you arrive for your course, um, we'll be able to sort that equipment out for you in our shop, um, but you will need to make us aware um, of what you're doing. So just drop us an email by info at the nhc.co.uk um, and we'll be able to sort that out for you, no problem. Are you heading to the school? Am I right? Pop in five. Right. Thank you very much. So this group are going to be heading into the indoor school, so we'll be able to watch them for five minutes, um, and then we'll head out onto the gallops to watch the other group. So a question from um, Shara about the body protectors. So the body protectors are actually um, loaned to each learner during the course here. So you don't have to purchase a body protector before you arrive. If you do have the correct standard um, of racing body protector before you do come to the course, then feel free to wear your own. Um, but they are loaned to you for the six weeks, but what, uh, sorry, for the 12 week course. Um, but once the 12 weeks is completed and you head out for work placement, you will have to purchase your own body protector because um, it is only provided for the 12 weeks. And in terms of hat, um, we do have a specific standard of hat that um, that learners have to wear whilst they're here. That is um, enclosed within the learner guide that we can share with you. Um, there is a certain code that you need on the hat. Uh, different brands such as Champion, Charles Owen, um, most of them are the correct standard that we need but it's definitely worth double checking because it must be that correct standard before you arrive best still last <laughs> so it's just a short walk to the indoor arena um, and once we're in there, we can have a little chat about um, what we use the indoor arena for. So during this open morning, we'll also get to see um, a demonstration from learners on the racing simulators. We'll also get to see some of the facilities here at the NHC um, and obviously watch the learners on the gallops as well. So a question about the work placement, is that near home um, or is it near the college? So we place learners up and down the country. Um, so from, you know, heights of Scotland down to Devon. 
um, depending on where you would like your work placement to be. So some learners, um, you know, they'd like to be in a, a in a in a big yard such as you know John Joe O'Neill's, Mark Johnston's, etc. Um, you can request that. Obviously, we can't promise um, any work placements because just depend on the time and when you're hoping to be placed. Um, but the training manager will work with you to make sure you're in a location for your work placement that suits you and the environment to suit you. So we do try and place learners within an hour of home if we can as well, just so that they're near to their family and friends. So like I said, we'll head into the indoor arena first and then we'll go and join them on the gallops. As you can see it's a little bit wet as well around. I think like most people we've had a fair amount of rain and snow recently. So looking forward to the spring. Uh, so this is our indoor arena as you can see it's a, a large space um, ideal for groups of learners so the learners um, every every day first lot is actually in the indoor arena so they'll all come in here for the first lot and on Saturdays they don't ride on the gallops they just ride in here um, so this is where their initial assessment takes place um, through to the end of the course. They'll ride in here every day. So once they get going in a minute, we'll be able to chat to um, Phil, who's the group's lead. Uh, we'll be able to just chat to him about, about why the arena is beneficial for the learners. So on the um, on the Tuesday after every learner arrives, they have the initial riding assessment in here. So whether you've you've ridden for years or you've never ridden before, um, this is where your um, initial assessment will take place. Uh, so it's just so that our training instructors can get an idea of um, what your ability is like, um, and just just see how you are riding. And then from there, they'll be able to place you. Um, in subgroups, so within your group, they'll put you in a um, in a group to suit your ability, and then we can go from there. So that's when the training begins and get new uh, get new ride in.
Phil, are we all right to have a quick chat with yeah. you a second? So, um, these learners, so what week are they, are they in now? Uh, these are just coming to the end of week four. Okay, so how, how are they progressing then? How, how are they really going? Good to be fair. I mean, we, we started with quite a small group anyway, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I know there's only six in here. Um, there's normally seven, but one of the other girls is uh, just watching back in here. And <laughs> one of the other girls has actually gone to the Gallop today. Okay. Um, so we've just got the six today. Yeah. But they're all progressing really well. They're all sort of obviously progressing in their own time. Yeah. Uh, we, we tried to push them enough to make them um, learn and, and learn to ride and actually, you know, get used to pushing themselves because that's yeah. what's needed for this industry. Um, and there's some that we just sort of take our time with that need a little bit more um, coaching and tuition due to anything that it could be like just lack of confidence yeah. or they need to work on a technique or something like that. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're a month in, um, but they're all progressing really nicely. Out of this group in here, there's probably another one or two that I'd be quite happy to send to the gallop next week. All right. Um, they've proved themselves in here enough, like they've been riding a few different range of horses. Yeah. Um, we sort of have a list of horses that we, we like each learner to have ridden. Um, not only just in rise and trot and warm up, but also sitting and standing, standing cantering. Yeah. Also in a string as well, so they'll they'll have a go at leading a string. Yeah. And uh, going behind another horse, just to see their reactions, making sure that they can take a pull, they can ride effectively. Yeah. They ride as a team, which is really important when you're on the gallop. And once we're happy that um, the learner can do that, and we're happy as a as a team of instructors that that learners can do that, then we sort of press them onto the gallop and then yeah. it's over to the gallop team then to further their tuition. Yeah. So it's all about the individual as well then. So you look at how they're progressing individually, not as a group as such. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like we'll we'll do videos some days and we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, we'll give once we've done a canter, whether it be a sitting canter or a standing canter, we'll um, give them each individual um, feedback and sort of little tips or tricks or what they might need to change to yeah. do differently next time for that particular horse. Um, and, you know, it, it's still a learning curve for them and we just hope that every time they they ride, they and if they were to ride these horses again tomorrow, they'd learn what they've um, learned today and, and take that into tomorrow and, and the weeks come in so they get used to riding each horse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, definitely an individual journey. Mm -hmm. um, each learner needs to push themselves to where they want to be and we sort of you know encourage them as much as much as we can yeah perfect thank you very much phil no i'll let you get on with the teaching them <laughs> and um, so there's a few questions just coming through at the minute um a question from mickey can we go home on the weekends or do we have to stay on site so under normal circumstances it's obviously with covid at the minute everything is um, changed but under normal circumstances learners will go home every other weekend um to see friends and family um, so as it would be in a racing yard um, when you're fully employed so learners would they'd work the saturday morning and they'd have saturday afternoon and sunday at home um, and they'd have to be back at the college by a specific time um, so obviously due to covid regulations at the minute uh, learners are having to stay on site for the full 12 weeks um, so we know how difficult that is for them not to see their friends and family but it does keep all of the learners um, safe here so the learners all have a covid test when they arrive as well um, and they all have to um, I well, isolate as such for, for 10 days um, so make sure they wear masks for 10 days um, and make sure they don't go um, within a range of other learners. Um, so once that 10 days, first 10 days is completed, um, then they're all can mix as a group. And a question as well from Phil, um, mentioned the 1416 course. Um, yeah, we can have a chat about that in a second when we're heading out to the gallops. Um, we'll have a quick chat with Sarah as well about that. Um, so we'll be able to head out now um, to watch the learners on the gallops. We'll just make sure that these learners are aware that we're leaving because we don't want to spook anybody. Uh, a question from Millie, how long does the arena lesson typically last? 
um, and also how much riding do you do every day. Um, so you probably ride in here for 45 minutes to an hour um, and every day you'd probably ride two, maybe three horses every day um, and they're all, we'll try and uh, mix up the horses as well so you'd be riding a, a different variation of horses too. Thanks, Phil. No See you later. See you later. Right then, so we'll head out to the gallops now. Um, so we'll chat a bit now about the um, 14 to 16 programme. So this programme is available for, um, obviously 14, 16 year olds are still in education. Um, so this qualification, um, it the school has to allow the learners um, one day day release don't they Sarah so it's yeah. typically a Wednesday um, of every week in in term time um, and this the the qualification that they do over the two years actually accounts for um, most of the foundation course qualification um, so if you want to if it's something that yourself or um, somebody you know would be interested in completing um, or getting involved in the 14 to 16 programme. The first steps you need to do is um, to contact your school um, because they would have to approve, um, they'd have to approve the course for the, the, the student to, to complete. alongside our foundation course students so they'll do all the stable, um, stable duties, riding and um, also do lectures so once the school's approved that then you just apply online um, or ask us for the link to the application form yeah and in terms of the cost it's actually funded by the school isn't it so that's what they have to approve yeah, yeah. 650 pounds per term yeah. Um, so that's three terms per year, a two-year course. So it's for year 10 and 11 pupils. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but if you, if teachers or heads got any queries, then um, do pass on our details, and they can. We're more than happy to uh, to teach to, you know, to speak to the teachers as well. Yeah. So once um, the learners turn 16, then they can um, once they've completed that. 14, 16 program. They do a shortened course, shortened yeah, version of the foundation course. Yeah, what normally happens is um, usually dependent on the riding ability, but we like to have them to come in for um, two, six, or, or full five weeks. Yeah, so depending on the individual. Um, so, yeah, just get them. Also, at that age, it's getting them used to living away from home as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So although they've gained the experience over the two weeks, they don't have the, the experience of being independent or living away and um, knowing day to day what it's like working in racing, I guess, when they do one day a week. So. Yeah, yeah, and also the instructors can work closer with them, um, look for the placement for them. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then get them a, a placement in the workplace and start the level two. When they do the level one diploma as part of the 14 to 16 programme, Although they ride, we can't give them the riding um, certificate qualification for that. Yeah, okay. So um, that's why we also, if they want to be riders, yeah. we don't need them to come in. And yeah, okay. Well. So, yeah, if anybody needs um, or would like any information on the 14 to 16 course, um, please drop us an email via info at the nhc.co.uk or messages on Facebook um, will we'll happily send over any information that yourself or, or your school needs um, for that programme. Um, so we're out on the gallops now. Um, once the Jeep comes back round, we'll be able to jump in and watch the gallops, uh, sorry, watch the learners on the gallops. Um, so you can see here uh, what the gallops look like. It'll be easier when we're in the truck um, to see what's happening. The learners are on the far side at the minute. Um, so the gallops is seven furlongs long. So if you're not sure how long seven furlongs is, um, it's just short of a mile. So there's eight furlongs in a mile. 
um, and this gallops seven furlongs. So, um, so cantering around this um, in the upright position is is quite testing, Sarah. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you got to be fit. <laughs> So it always looks a lot easier on video or pictures than it actually is. <laughs> um, so you can see in the middle, um, in the middle of the, the gallops as well, you can probably see some stalls and a few um, fences as well. That's what we use for the specialist courses. So the, the jockey courses here at the NHC. So a lot of people that come here to complete the foundation course, uh, they aspire to be jockeys and that's a, what a lot of uh, learners aspire to be um, so the the process of, of doing that is you need to successfully complete the foundation course you need to successfully complete the six-week work placement that takes place um, after the foundation course um, you'd also need to have completed or be working towards your level two apprenticeship um, so this that's what you can enroll onto once you're in full-time employment um, and once you've either completed or are walk, working towards the level two um, so you can speak to your um, your boss which is the racehorse trainer and if they feel that you're um, you're suitable to become um, either a flat jockey or a national hunt jockey um, they will put you forward for a jockey license uh, so it all depends on the individual um, in terms of abilities um, you know how good the riding is to to determine if the racehorse trainer puts you forward for a jockey license um, and there isn't a time frame on it either I know a lot of people ask how long does it take um, but there isn't a time frame at all it just depends on the individual um, so if that's a route that you want to go down um, to be a jockey, um, then you'd start with the foundation course. So we're just waiting for the learners to head round. Uh, like I say, it is a long way round, so they do take a do take a while to come all the way around. Um, and whilst they are, we'll just touch on um, what the steps would be. Uh, the progression would be after you've completed the foundation course. So we spoke earlier um, about what happens after the foundation course um, once you've successfully completed that here at the NHC. Um, if you weren't here to start with, then I'll just go through it again. Um, so after successful completion of the foundation course, um, learners will typically be offered six week work placement. So this is with a racehorse trainer um, anywhere in the UK. The location is determined between yourself and our training manager here at the college. Um, so it depends on the individual as to where the location will be. But we do try and place learners within one hour of, of home. Um, so once the six week work placement is completed, we will then, um, so learners will typically be taken on into full time employment. So up to 96% of our learners are actually um, given full time employment after successful com completion of the, of the work placement. And then once you're in full time employment with a racehorse trainer, you can then um, apply for your level two apprenticeship. So this is the most natural route for learners to go to. Um, and you can apply for your for your level two apprenticeship as soon as you're in the workplace and earn a full-time wage um, and the level two takes around a year to complete um, and once that's successfully successfully completed uh, there are options to to go on to your level three um, and possibly level four as well so if you want any more information about um, the level two three or four apprenticeship please let us know we can send some information out for you So we'll see if we're able to jump in the Jeep.
So they're all now um, walking. So they've done their two laps in trot as a warm up, and they're now all walking to put the stirrups up. Right, so we'll be able to follow them now. Um, looks like there are two groups. Yeah, there's two streets. Yeah, fab. Maybe even three actually. Yeah, a solo. Mm. So it looks a big group now, but um, like Claire just said, we'll be splitting them into either two or two or three groups. And so they won't sure you're short enough to be able to. They won't all canter at the same time. Yeah, don't worry, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Don't worry at all. <laughs> no, don't worry, it's fine. Thank you. So some of the learners are now just um, pulled off the gallops, just because we do canter in smaller groups. So they'll be going in um, another two groups after this. So we'll be able to watch uh, one or two groups before we then head back and have a look at the facilities uh, back at the main building. So just making sure the rails are all back and then we head in and follow this group. Morella, just try and split your reins a second and open your left rein if you can, just to make it quite clear. Spin. That's it, go on, turn him round. Go on, just give him a kick and just That's it, now send you forward, push your hands forward if you can. Uh, uh, open the left rein. Open the left rein. Just try and get his left forward. The rest of you just come back to walk a second. Alex, try and catch up with the front two, so it'll make it a bit easier. You just try and get yourself back together as a string. Thank you. 
Why did you stand up before you had to wait? You should have gone to the couple of strides. Okay, right, we've reattached ourselves, guys. Our distances are good. I don't want you any closer to gamesters. So you need to extend your leg. Melissa, that pace is fine at the front. Just don't let him keep that. Keep the contact on his mouth, Melissa. Let him know you're there. Keep your hips up and across the back of the saddle, Ellie. So drop the weight back and just hold Tommy there. Ellie, you don't need to grab him any shorter. Your contact is actually spot on there. But if you need to take a pull, you need to drop your weight back. That's it, he's listening. If you're shaking his head, he's listening. You're going to need to let go of your neck strap and bring your hands back to your neck strap. and you actually all rode really proactively there so well done good effort okay if you turn around before the whip round sit tight Ellie good girl Ellie Melissa can you just trot on and just catch up with those two for me girls so we've got you all back together we can get back to string Today, as he 
past them other times this week. Yeah. Yeah, no good, your position looked great, your distance was spot on. Um, yeah, I thought you did a really good job. Yeah. Now for round two with Novel. So there was a few question that, questions that came through whilst we're on the gallops, but obviously with the um, with the wind blowing through the windows, it's hard to hard to talk. So we'll be able to answer some of them now for you all. So it's great to see some of the learners that are joining us in the next few months watching. So you'll be able to to see what it'd be like when you're here shortly. A question from Jen, when do we have to pay the money before we come? So um, so we asked for the, the £350 cost of the course to be paid um, 
you know, two weeks, a week before you arrive. You can pay it before then, that's absolutely fine, um, but you need to have paid it in advance of, of starting your course. There's also the £50 room deposit um, that's refundable that I mentioned earlier. That uh, that can be paid on the day that you arrive or you can pay that um, uh, prior to your course as well. So as long as everything's paid up front prior to your course, um, then that's absolutely fine. So the instructors are now just getting um, the next group ready to head out. Uh, so we won't be watching the next group, we'll actually be heading back to um, to the main site just to have a look at the few more facilities that are, um, that are at the NHC and later on we'll actually see a demo on the racing simulators as well uh, which is normally a firm favourite during our open mornings where we welcome visitors to the NHC um, but obviously at the minute not able to welcome any visitors um, we do that virtually instead. So this little area in front of us here, this is where they, um, they either keep warm if they haven't cantered yet or this is where they just cool down if they have cantered. Um, so they just circle, keep the horses moving um, and they jump off like you can see in front. Um, so they jump off if, if they've ridden. See, as you can see, they've all put their stirrups up, ready to, ready to canter. So the only time you put your stirrups up is when you're cantering. We're heading back now, but we'll be down at half eleven for the racing simulator. Is that all right? Yeah, if we're not back, um, yeah, I'll we'll keep an eye on this one. Sure, right. Yeah. 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 Do you want to take fly back with them now? Sure. Thanks. So we'll have a chat with a few of them that have just um, just cantered and see how that went. Uh, obviously, it's not always perfect the horses don't always behave as they should do because they're not not machines they are sometimes a bit naughty as you found out <laughs> today <laughs> so how do you because you've ridden him a bit haven't you how how do you deal with him then when he's a bit naughty yeah Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he's getting there, bless him. <laughs> so how much have you ridden him on the gallops then? Are you quite familiar with how he goes? Yeah. So he's relatively new as well, isn't he, to the college. So he's getting into all the, the routines and obviously he's used to his racing routine. Um, which is very similar to this, but um, yeah, his cheeky ways are coming out, aren't they? <laughs> Bless him. Right, let's have a chat with Ellie. How did that go for you today? Really well, better than yesterday. Yeah, you're happy with that? Yeah. So how, how did it differ to yesterday then? Yesterday was a lot stronger and I changed my hands so he got even stronger because he carries his head low. Yeah. And he lifted it up so I shortened it and he plays TV. And um, <laughs> he was too strong and it nearly went wrong while Nelly was upside. Yeah. But I held him better today. I just need more holes in my stirrups to go. <laughs> yeah. So at least yesterday, you know, if it does go wrong, it's not the end of the world. It's the, the next day you can then go out and improve it and feel much better about it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, it looked good, so well done.
And you were leading for the first time today. <laughs> How did that go? Yeah, you get you get to that. That you know, as you keep going, it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> Visit your first time on games as well. Oh, so that's really good then. So leading for the first time, running games for the first time, really good effort. Are you really happy with that then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look good to us anyway. So well done. Look at Charlie. <laughs> Gotta love Charlie, haven't we? <laughs> I think he's most favourite, isn't he? He's the pony that thinks he's about 18 hands, isn't he? <laughs> Bless him. So are you heading out after this slot? Yeah. So you're going solo, are you? Right, so we've had a chat with them guys that have, uh, a few of them have ridden and the canter that we saw. So if anyone's got any questions at all uh, during the morning, please feel free to comment. Um, and we'll either answer them live or we'll um, we'll comment back to you if it's a, a link or um, anything that we need to send to you. So yeah, be, please feel free to comment and um, ask any questions. No such thing as a silly question either. Um, whatever you want to ask. Yeah, I'm just sure that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's normally just pride, isn't it, that's hurt. Bless them. Yeah, me too. All too well. <laughs> so, that group has just... Uh, done their canter, they're now walking back. The instructors will give them a bit of a, a debrief. Um, and as the learners progress through the course as well, the, the instructors will ask the learners for their feedback. So instead of the instructors, um, you know, giving them advice all the time, the instructors will want feedback from from the learners because in a, in a racing yard, um, once they're, you know, cantering and working the horses on the gallops for... Um, as a full-time employee, um, the trainer will want a debrief on each horse, how it went, if there was any issues. Um, so it gets the learners used to, to giving a bit of feedback on the horses, how they went, because the, um, the racehorse trainers will give that feedback back to owners um, if they need to. So it's really important that they can give feedback on, on how the horses went, how the horses felt. Um, and whilst they're here at the college, it's how, how the learners felt you know, their position and their balance um, and in their strength and things like that. Um, so one thing we haven't mentioned either is the, um, so the earphones that the learners wear on the gallops. Um, so each learner has a, um, has a radio and earphones. So the, the instructors can actually talk to the learners whilst they're, they're riding. Uh, so they talk to them as a group um, and it just enables the instructors to give them feedback um, so they're not having to you know shout out of a window etc it just allows them to um, to give them any gentle feedback that they might need um, or any advice whilst they're riding but they typically you know try and let the the learners um, gather their own you know their own pace uh, make sure everything's done correctly uh, but they'll intervene if they have to through the earphones Uh, question from Mickey, do we need to buy the earphones? Um, 
Uh, yes, so that's something that's in the learner guide that you'll be sent out just before you start your course. Um, so little things like that that you'll uh, you need to purchase before the course. Um, we do sell them in our on-site shop. Um, or if you don't have them already, um, you can get them you know cheaply online. Um, but it's just the standard uh, earphones that you'd need. So there's a question from Jen, um, when buying things from the shop will there be uh, people there to help fit hats and boots etc? Yeah absolutely, so we are qualified uh, or we have members of staff that are qualified to fit hats correctly um, and then we can obviously find you know, the right boot for you as well whilst you're here so we can give advice on all the equipment that you need um, but we do advise before you start your course if you have any um, any equipment that you need to purchase from the shop just let us know prior just so we can make sure it's all in stock because um, the last thing we want is for you to um, you know plan on purchasing your your gear on on the day that your course starts and we don't have it in stock so you can purchase it online um, and just let us know that we you know that you can collect it on the day uh, we just want to make sure that you everyone's got the equipment that they need before before they, they start riding and being on the yards, etc. Thinks he's Frankel now, don't he? He's off on his own. <laughs> yeah. How big is he? Is he about 13 too, is he? Um, yeah, I bet he'd only be 13 too. Yeah, dinky, isn't he? <laughs> There's a question from Mickey um, Can the instructors take videos of you? You can send them to your. Um, to your parents. Yeah, our instructors do take videos um, as and when they can. Um, myself, Sarah and Zoe here at the college, we also take videos as well and pop them on social media. Um, but yeah, we do take videos throughout so you can see your progress. Um, another thing we do as well is um, video, well, the instructors will video the learners and play it back on the, um, on the screens with the simulators so they can see how to improve um, the position, balance, etc. Um, when they're riding, but they'll do it through the racing simulators. So we're going to head back now to, uh, to the main site. Thank you. They're getting closer, aren't they? <laughs> Like that. Yeah. <laughs> you can see on the gallops today that obviously there's a few horses that are a bit cheeky uh, and they do test the learners sometimes. Um, you know, it's not always plain sailing. These horses aren't, aren't machines and 
you know sometimes they do just test them a bit but that's you know it's good that the learners can deal with that and they come off the gallop smiling so that's that's always a bonus and once the learners are out into the workplace as well you know the horses aren't easy out there so we make it as, as realistic to the workplace as we possibly can so it looks like we'll just catch Charlie doing his canter so we'll just watch him quickly before we head back So as you can see, um, Charlie is a pony um, and we do have pony racing training days and pony racing camp here at the NHC as well. So if anybody's watching that's either already taking part in, in pony racing um, or it's something that you'd like to get involved in, um, then that's something that we do here. We do have the um, training days and camp they're on site. The, web, the dates are on our website if anybody wants to go and have a look at them. Um, yeah, we also run the um, part of the 1416 programme. Um, if anybody shows willing and they're wanting to do the Pony Racing Academy, it's like a scholarship. Um, so we um, we'd come in still on the Wednesday, um, we'd ride the ponies, um, and then we'd um, enter your kind of point to point or pony to pony race. So, all good experience and fun. Yeah, exactly. Especially those that you know aspire to be jockeys. It's it's the best route to go down, isn't it? To start when you're a lot younger and uh, you know the ropes of it all, then, don't you? So, in terms of ages to do the pony racing, yeah, pony racing um, training days are open to anyone aged nine to uh, sixteen. Well, fifteen, but we've got to be uh, fifteen on the first of January of that year. Yeah. Um, and then camp is um, 11 to, um, again, 15 year old. Yeah. And for the camp, um, they'll need to bring their own ponies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And training days. Yeah. Training yeah. days of camp for, for those with their own ponies. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what shape and size. Welcome anybody. It's just about having fun, learning. Yeah, exactly. Better off on something a bit steadier sometimes to learn on. Yes, yeah, so if you've got a 12 hand cob. Yeah, that you've definitely. got a general purpose saddle that's you don't need anything else do you yeah, so, um, so you don't need to have your racing saddle um, if you're doing pony club as well it's um, it's an ideal route to go down if you're already doing pony club or riding clubs so yeah, anyone that's interested please let us know and we'll send you over some information So it's a little bit of a walk back to the main site, so just bear with us until we get there. So we're actually based in the grounds of Rosington Hall as well. If um, if you know those watching haven't been before, um, as you can see just in front of us, that is Rosington Hall. So we're based in the grounds of Rosington Hall. It's, it's approximately four or five miles from Doncaster um, town centre. So although it's very very peaceful and quiet here, we're not far away from any major routes. Um, you know the A1. M1, M18, M62, we're very accessible here. So 
one horse out in the field that's he's having a great time. horses just making themselves as filthy as possible for the learners to clean. It's always a joy in the winter. Uh, right then, should we have a look at the facilities? Um, right, so we'll have a look at the facilities here at the NHC um, before we head over to the simulator room. So this is the main reception to the NHC. So at the moment, due to COVID, we do have um, a one-way system in operation. We also have, this is where temperatures are taken um, and obviously plenty of hand sanitizer around the site. We do have that anyway with, with the nature of um, the environment, but we have obviously increased that with COVID. So through here is where the canteen is. So this is where the learners will have um, their meals a day. <laughs> so there's Louise, one of our Hello. cooks. <laughs> um, so this is where um, all three meals a day are, um, are given to the learners. So you can see on these here, this just gives you an idea of the type of um, of the type of meals that we do every day. If you do have any dietary requirements at all, we can, we can accommodate them. So just let us know prior to your course starting uh, and we can accommodate that. So we have hot and cold options for the learners to make sure in the winter they're kept nice and warm. And this is where the food is prepared and given to the learners. So there's also fresh fruit, tea, coffee, um, cold drinks available to the learners 24-7 um, as well. So the seating area in here is where the food will be given to the learners. So we'll now head upstairs. Um, we'll go and have a look at what's called the rec room. So the rec room is um, an area that the learners can spend their downtime. So this is the rec room. As you can see, it's, um, you know, sofas. There's a pool table there. We also have some exercise equipment in here if the learners wish to, to come here on an evening and, um, and exercise. We do also have um, a gym that's open when learners wish to, to use the facilities. As long as they're um, accompanied by a member of staff, they can use the facilities in their spare time. So we have a TV there, so for all the Netflix lovers out there, we do have um, Netflix as well. So join downtime in the evenings, watch your favourite programmes on there. And we have a tuck shop as well. So this is open every single evening, um, so the learners can purchase any essential items that they need, um, any toiletries, and it also sells lots of sweets and goodies as well. So the learners can purchase anything from that shop. And like I say, it's open every single evening um, for the learners to have a look and purchase that. We have some books as well. Um, if the learners want any, any reading at all. Um, and on this board here, this just gives you um, an idea of the weekly schedule that the learners will will have. So let me take that off and you'll be able to see that a bit better. So this here just gives you an idea of 
um, of the, the routine that the learners would do. Um, you can see there on a Saturday and a Sunday, they have a lot more free time. Um, they don't ride on a Sunday, they only ride um, on a Saturday morning and then Monday to Friday mornings. So that's that. And there's also some different items on this board um, for the learners to look at whilst they're here. And we do have staff on site, obviously 24 seven with it being residential. Um, so the residential staff here on an evening, they can offer support and um, for any learners that may need it. You know, if you need an emergency appointment for the doctors, dentist, etc., cetera, um, that's what our residential staff will sort out in an evening. So you can just see the learners heading back from the gallops now. So it's a nice view from up here in the rec room. Um, so we've asked a question, is there a specific time of year you need to join the course? Um, so no, we have courses start every single six weeks. We don't shut down at all, even over Christmas. Um, we don't shut, so, um, so yeah, we don't, we accept applications 365 days of the year and um, you can apply for a course whenever you, you wish to and yeah, like I say, a course starts every single six weeks. So at any one time we have um, around 40 learners on site, um, that would be under normal circumstances. Uh, obviously with COVID at the moment, slightly less numbers due to um, the accommodation arrangements. We have to make sure learners have single rooms within the first 10 days of being on site. Um, but it is typically around 40 learners on site at any one time. So we'll now head out to the uh, simulator room <laughs> someone's got the pleasure of cleaning <laughs> so that one's been a monkey and decided his rug doesn't want to be on his back anymore um, so that poor learner will have to <laughs> Get the hands mocking. The pleasure of horses, eh? <laughs> so just in front of me there, that's actually the accommodation block. Um, we can't actually go in there at the moment due to COVID and safety. Um, we need to make sure the learners are kept safe at all times. So um, we won't actually be going in there today. Yeah, but one of our previous open mornings earlier in 2020 actually shows a residential block. So you can either look back on Facebook or YouTube um, and you can actually view what the residential block is like on there. So this is what we call the top yard up here. Um, this is where we used to house some of the National Horse Racing College horses. Um, and it's now home to the Doncaster Equine College horses. So if there's anybody watching that would like to work uh, train and work with horses or that aren't race horses then um, take a look at our sister college Doncaster Equine College uh, we offer level one two and three in horse care and horse management so this is the racing simulator room as you can see the learners are giving us a bit of a demo now
So it's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you out of breath? It's all good for fitness, not only for technique, but for fitness as well. You know, fitness is a huge part of riding yeah. any horse, let alone resources. And uh, so, yeah, the guys are in here, and you can do plenty of sort of up down, yeah. what you saw, and, and taking a pull. It's all there, not just for technique, but for fitness. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that when they get on the real thing, the, uh, they've sort of got a, a certain level of fitness already, and we try and encourage them. Yeah. And we try and encourage them to go running and do things in their own time because you know you you, you can't be too fit to ride a horse, you know. Yeah, and exactly. Fitness helps. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, these these machines are handy for, for that. Yeah, definitely. Well. Yeah, exactly. So when learners um, start the course. They've maybe never ridden before. How do you start with this then, with the racing simulators with them? Okay, so if they've never ridden, or even if they have, because people have probably been in different disciplines and they hold the reins differently. Yeah. So in here it's good because we can we can show them how to hold their reins in a single bridge or a double bridge. Yeah. We can show them how to change their hands, um, which is all that's you know you, you need to sort of know all the basics before you get on the real thing because. So if, uh, if you go to change your hands on a resource, they might take it the wrong way as though you want to get yeah. faster. So there's sort of different ways you can change your hands to in certain manners um, where changing your hands might be just to get a bit more contact when if in preparation for a counter. Hmm. As opposed to people sometimes think of changing the hands where jockeys are riding races, it's all about going as fast as you can. Yeah, exactly. So we try and learn them the, the more subtle way of doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, more in, in terms of preparation to counter rather than actually going faster. Yeah, exactly. So those that have maybe ridden since they've been tiny, they think, well, I know how to ride, it's fine. Um, you know, it is very different than the conventional way of riding, isn't it? Yeah, In so terms of the reins. Yeah, yeah, we get learners that have, have said, oh, I've been riding since I was 10, but it's a completely different style of riding. You know, yeah. if you're out riding, you show jump or whatever, these, are, these horses are a lot, they're a lot leaner, they're a lot, they're a lot quicker, they're a lot sharper. Yeah. And it is a different style of riding, and, um, which is why, it, you know, it's good if you've never had experience with resources, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And even yeah. if you've had lots of experience, it works, you know, we, we work with both ends of the spectrum. And, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we start everybody off in a group, and we, we all learn together, so nobody's disadvantaged, and, and yeah. we just build it up as the weeks go on. Yeah, exactly. So can you give us a bit of a demo, then, on how you'd hold the reins um, on a racehorse? So what's yeah. the correct way? So how we, how we, if I just get a demo to show you here, if they've never ridden a racehorse before and they're unsure of how to ride with the bridge, they always encourage them to just have their hand, the reins, sort of either side of the horse's neck like that. Yeah. And all you do is if you're just, if you just cross them on the horse's neck. Yeah, so if you cross them on the horse's neck like that, yeah. you're automatically picking that up position. Yeah. So it's it sounds that it's one of the simplest things to do because if you've got your reins, you lay them on your horse and then you cross them, yeah. you automatically where the cross meets is where the double bridge and because Dylan's got his hands there, you can see from the tightness of the reins he's actually got an ideal contact. So even when we type sort of encourage the learners to do that when they get on the horse for the first time, yeah. just cross your reins on the neck and then you will learn sort of where to hold and because there's the cross you sort of get a grip at each side. Yeah. That's one of the easiest ways to learn how to hold a bridge. Yeah, exactly. And it becomes kind of second nature, doesn't it, after a while? Yeah, it does, yeah. After sort of a week or so of going on these and, and riding the real thing, um, they're normally all pretty good at, at sort of getting the double bridge straight away so we can we can crack on. Because we want to utilise as much time as we can, so it's important while we're walking down the yard, we, we teach them to get their girth, get their stirrups level yeah. and ready. So that when we get into the arena, so if we've got an hour's slot for a lesson, the learners get as much of that full hour as they can. Yeah. Um, because whenever they're on the horse, they're learning, and you know that's where most of the learning takes place. So yeah, I exactly. I encourage all, um, all my group and that to, to get ready, so when we're there, we can crack on. Yeah. I don't want to sort of go in there and then waste 10 minutes, maybe sort of resaddling the horse or something like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we try and get everything done, we try and teach them, so we we'll check them in the yard, so... When we get into the arena, we can crack on. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you for that, both of you. <laughs> you can uh, you got your breath back now. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot harder than it looks, though, isn't it? Because, you know, a lot of people will watch it or see photos, videos, 
Um, and you think, well, you know, you just kind of stand in your stirrups, but you do have to be fit, don't you? So anyone yeah, that's yeah. anyone that's going to start, I know we always say fitness, 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 but um, you will find the course easier, won't you? Absolutely. The fitter you are. If you're watching this today and you're, um, you might be on a course in like the next cohort in a few weeks, in a couple of weeks, or whatever, and you think, you know, if, if you can do anything to do with fitness and, and core strength and upper body strength, then, you know, really do what you can, whether it's just press up to sit up to your bedroom, to the plank. Yeah. If you've got, um, if you can go running or on a bike, it, it, it all helps. It'll yeah. all encourage. So when you get here, and it's not just riding, that's, that's how, it's just a general yard work, you know, we, yeah. we, um, we push the learners to be mucked out in 20 minutes so that they can make first lot pull out and, you know, we try and keep to a tight schedule because yeah. at the end of the day, when they go into workplace, that they're going to expect to be able to do things to time. Yeah, exactly. You know, like even like going to a yard, first lot might be at half seven, they might have three horses to look at by half seven. Yeah. And so we, we try and crack them with fear as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, keep getting up to speed, getting fit yeah. and strong as, as much as we can because that's our job to prepare them for the workplace. And yeah. if, if we didn't do our job and push them as much as we can, then. Um, I suppose you know they might not have, have much chance when they get into the industry. So. Yeah, you've got to be realistic, haven't you? At yeah, the end yeah. Of the day. We, we try and run it as realistic as we can. Although yeah. we are a, a, an educational facility, we try and run it as as close to the real thing as we can yeah. to give them an insight into it and hope that when they complete their twelve weeks, they get a job and they they keep their job and they get taken on and have a good career. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that, Phil, and thank you to you both as well. Yeah, <laughs> Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, Dylan. Go. Week four, week four, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, and okay. uh, look forward to following your progress. Thank you, thank you. See you later. So that was a demo there on the racing simulators from two learners. So it just gives you an idea of um, of what they're used for, um, how they use, and just so that you're familiar with um, with how they are used. So there's a few questions that came through um during that video um do you share a room or do you get your own um obviously with covid at the moment everybody has to start with their own room um but we are majority the majority of twin rooms um so a lot of learners will want to share um with other learners it's a bit of company um but uh if, if you do wish to have a single room then you can request it but we can't uh, we can't promise that you will get that because we don't have a lot of single rooms. Um, so they are available, but not to everybody. Uh, a question from Leisha. Um, it's starting October and before CETA, are there going to be different options of food? Um, so we have, um, you know, different plans of food that we do. But if, if you just let us know exactly what, um, you know, what, what foods that you, you don't want to eat, and we can definitely accommodate that for you. Um, on your course just let us know prior to your course starting um, via email or messages on Facebook um, and we'll be able to make sure our, our cooks are, are aware of that um, right then at the moment we're in um, we're in the uh, washroom so we've got all the um, all the saddle pads here uh, so one of the roles and responsibilities for the learners is to wash all the saddle pads, which it looks like it's <laughs> it's your role. <laughs> um, so all um, all learners during the course, they all get a role and responsibility. Um, they've all got different chores that they achieve, whether it's to make sure all the saddle pads are uh, clean and put away um, every single day, ready for the next day or whether it's cleaning the, the boot room out, whether it's making sure all the, um, the grooming bags are ready for the horses. So they all have a different role and responsibility whilst they're here. So this is the tack room. Um, obviously where all the, all the saddles and bridles are, are kept. As you can see, there's some empty spaces because they're out, they've just ridden, so they'll be heading back with the tack shortly. Um, but this just gives you a bit of an idea of um, of the tack that they wear in racing so bridles are pretty standard um, some some things change to so that what's called a bit um, that may be different depending on the horse it's generally 
um, a snaffle that they'd wear. Um, but that's what we call a bubble bit. So it just depends on, on the horse um, and what type they need. Um, if you follow racing at all, you'll be familiar with the orange um, rubber on the reins. That's very much a tradition in racing to have that, if you've ever seen um, the orange rubber and wondered what that's for. Um, so yeah, a few different um, bits on this tack here, but like I say, it just depends on, on the horse um, and their way of going as to what, what they wear. So here is a racing saddle, if you've never seen one before. Um, so if you're used to seeing a general purpose saddle for a more conventional way of riding, then um, you're probably not used to seeing these. So this is what's called um, a half tree saddle. Um, so they fit, they fit. They're very comfy. Are they very comfy? <laughs> Are they comfier than a GP saddle? So there we go, proof that they're, they're nice and comfy. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's half tree saddle. Um, the saddles, they'll fit any horse. So like your general purpose saddle, uh, they're fitted to a horse. So a racing saddle is will fit any horse because it's not got a tree in it. Um, so horses that need a bit more padding, you put a few more um, saddle pads underneath. So you'll also see as well on the stirrups, um, these are what are called safety stirrups. So you'll see the curve in them there. Um, so these are so that if any learners happen to get the foot through the iron whilst they're riding, um, it'll ensure that the, the foot can, can come out of the, the, the stirrup um, and make sure that they're safely, um, safely riding. So they just prevent any, any injuries with the, with the feet. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the saddle here. Um, if you've never seen one before. And we'll pop that back on Frank's peg. So that was Frank's tack there. So all the learners um, throughout the course as well, they have to learn how to uh, clean tack. So take it apart, um, clean it, put it back together. It's really important that you know, look after leather tack um, so that it, it doesn't break when you're riding it. You know, it's nice and supple um, and there's no grease or sweat on there at all. Um, so yeah, this is the tack room. So you can see a TV up there as well. So a lot of the big racing festivals that we have, we put them on um, TV and a lot of the learners like to follow the racing. Um, so we always have that on there for them. So like your Cheltenham, your, your Aintree. Um, things like that. So lastly, we're just going to head up um, to the top of this building just to show you um, a few of the areas that we do the, um, the evening programme or the lectures in. Um, a question from Jen, are the bridge protectors different to the standard ones used for riding? Um, so all body protectors come with a, um, uh, they have a, like a code on them because it has to be a certain standard. So we accept body protectors with a certain code. So a lot of older body protectors may not necessarily have this code. Um, if, you're ever, if you're looking for a body protector to purchase, um, race safe are um, the ones that you need to be looking at really. So up here is where the library is. So this library is where a lot of the evening programmes, um, functional skills and the lectures take place. So we've got all the, the gear here. Um, one thing to mention as well, is that we do have, sorry, learners have access to the Racing to Learn. Um, they're actually free online um, courses that anybody can, can take part in at all. So if you're watching this um, and you're going to be starting a course soon or you're just interested in the, uh, you know, the horse racing industry in general, if you go on to www.racingtolearn.com, um, they have a, a wide range of free online courses that you can complete. 
Um, there's, there's so many on there that, that you can complete, um, you know, work your way through them if you wish. But there's definitely something that if you're interested or if you're starting a course soon, um, then head there. Racing, number two, and then learn. So this is the library. So we'll head back down now. So we'll be finishing the open one in the next few minutes. So if anybody has any questions at all, um, please let us know and we'll, um, we'll be able to answer them. And also, if anybody would like um, an information pack sending after this open morning, then um, please email us via info at the nhc.co.uk um, or pop your email in the comments or message us on, on Facebook with your email address and we'll be able to send that out, um, out to you. Um, it's just a follow-up from the open morning. Um, important information you need to know, how to apply, um, just a bit more further information. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to receive that email, uh, then please get in contact. Send us your email address um, and we'll be able to send that out to you. Um, question from Alicia um, about the glasses. Um, you can wear glasses, that's absolutely fine. Um, we do sell goggles in our shop. Um, so the best thing to do is to figure out which goggles um, fit over your glasses the best. So we have a few different brands. Um, so when you're here, you can you know try them on and and just see which ones fit you fit over your glasses the best. So that concludes um, our open morning this morning. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Hopefully you got all the information that you needed about our courses. If you'd like any further information at all, just drop us an email um, via info at the nhc.co.uk or messages on Facebook. Um, so please let us know if you need any more information at all or if you've got any further questions that you'd like to ask. So please let us know. Um, but no, thank you very much everyone and hope you have a lovely rest of the day.